Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. So the title of this video is you're not asking the right question when it comes to your health and weight loss and um, how to be more fit. And for years I've been asking myself the wrong question and making the wrong comments to myself. The kind of questions I would ask is how can I lose weight? How can I feel better? How can I get my blood pressure down? How can I get my cholesterol down? And I would make comments like, I just got to stop doing this to myself. I got to stop eating this junk every day. I got to st stop destroying my body. You know, how, how can I still enjoy these foods that I love and lose weight? How can I still be healthy and control the binge eating and have a treat every once in a while? Those are the kind of comments and questions I would ask myself. And then this year it started dawn, dawning on me that, no, I don't want to ask that question. I, that's not what I want. I start asking my question, my, myself, how can I not desire these things ever again? Just like someone not desiring tobacco. I don't desire tobacco. I don't desire illegal drugs. And so that's how I wanted to feel about junk food. And, and sugar and cakes and cookies and McDonald's and fast food. That's the kind of things I just don't want to enjoy anymore. Why does that have to be a treat for me? Why, do, why does that have to be a treat for my birthday or whatever? But it's been a lifestyle for me. I, I eat that stuff. I used to eat that stuff every day. We're talking about for decades now. And I, I felt it destroying me and killing me. Slowly. And... It just got worse in my 40s. And so I started to ask, how can I not want these things? And so 70 days ago, I went on a journey, a pledge to never eat sugar again. Not temporarily. Not until I lose weight. Not until I have it under control. No, I made the pledge never to eat sugar again. And everything else will fall where it may. And so, when I stopped sugar, it was very depressing. And all these feelings of anxiety and depression and guilt and shame would come up from my childhood, from my adulthood, of things that I wish I had done. The time that has passed, that I've lived with the gut of being grossly morbidly o overweight and those feelings were harboring and then the the feeling of and the and the little voice in my brain would say you know you can get rid of that just go down here and get you a, a double quarter pounder of cheese and a large soda and then when you're on your way back home maybe stop by you know the gas station and pick up a snicker bar you know, because you want the you want it to be complete, and you don't want to, you know. And then tomorrow you can start doing better and start eating your salads and whatever, and things will be better again. And it's a roller coaster that I've lived my whole life doing, and I know. But by just taking that one thing out, sugar, it caused devastation to my emotions and to my mood, and I was feeling depressed, and I wanted to sleep in bed all day. There were some days I did sleep in bed all day. I didn't wake up until 1 o'clock in the, in the afternoon. I just stayed in bed, just curled up in a blanket like a little child. But I wasn't eating sugar. And I kept it out of my body. And now 70 day, days later, I don't crave it. I don't crave junk food or cakes and cookies. So when I asked that question of how can I not desire that stuff, I got my wish. I got my wish, guys. And that's what you should want too. And here's the thing. you got to understand who the, the culprit is of what's destroying your body. You know, the government and the corporations have been lying to us for years. You know, with the, with the USDA pyramid and telling us that wheat's good for you and it's whole grains is great for you. No, no, it's not. And that it's okay to sparingly have sugar. It's like telling a kid it's sparingly okay to have alcohol or to, to have um, Coke, you know, the illegal kind. It, and so it's the same thing, guys. It's poison. 
And once you understand the devil, the culprit, is sugar, then everything else will 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 go like it's supposed to. You will stop craving the cakes and cookies once you get it out of your body, the sugar out of your body. And when I say sugar, I mean excess sugar, man-made sugar that they that they put. I don't talk. I'm not talking about sugar that's in fruits and vegetables. That's na that's natural in foods. Those are the kind of sugars we do need. I'm talking about the fake stuff that spikes our sugar levels and it makes our our liver store the fat because it can't process it in the blood. Blood it can't excrete it. It has to make it into fat or it'll destroy your body. It'll poison you if if you're if you if you consume too much sugar, and every time you put excess sugar in your body, in the form of a Snicker bar or a, or a cookie, it makes it fat. There's no there's no question. And if you went out to exercise, you'd have to exercise three hours to get rid of the Snicker bar. Okay, so that's when it clicked for me. And when they say that diets don't work, they are correct. What I'm doing now is a lifestyle now. It's not something that I will treat myself ever again with. I'll treat myself with a massage or going out into the sun or uh, a nice, um, you know, cup of coffee, you know, with no sugar, right? And so you will go through depression. You will go through withdrawal. It will be painful. But I promise you, you will come out of the other end happy. You know, and they say that when a person starts their negative substance of choice, whether that be alcohol or an illegal drug, a lot of psychologists say that you emotionally stop growing when you start taking it. And you won't start to emotionally grow until you stop the substance. And I'm pretty sure that sugar has the same effect on your body as an illegal drug or alcohol. Almost confident, because that's why I was going through all that. And and so there's 40 and 50 and 60 year olds that are walking around today with the emotional mentality of a 20 year old or a 15 year old when they started their substance or, or um, drug of choice. And I think sugar does the same thing to the to the human body. And these food industries like Nestle and all, and and Coca Cola, they they lie to us. They make us feel like that there's some kind of halfway ground. There's some kind of median or moderation. There's no such moderation when it comes to sugar, guys. There's no, there is no substitute. And so I've looked at life differently the last 70 years, rather 70 days. Um, I'm healthier. My environment has changed. I don't when I drive down the street, I don't think, hmm, when's going to be my next sugar crash? And so everything around me has changed. My brain is changing. The chemistry of my brain is slowly changing. The the neurons in my brain or 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 uh, the synapses is being released differently. It's not thinking about sugar. It's thinking now about other things like how to be more successful business wise, how to gain better relationships and better friendships. Now it's not 24-7 on when can I get a heart attack hamburger. It's not on that anymore. It's changing. And like Dr. Berg says, he's a, a YouTuber uh, a, who's, who's pro-vegan here on YouTube. He says you're building a new body slowly, but you're building a new body. And that should be the goal. And he's right. You know, the liver takes like four years, thirty to forty years, if you got a fatty liver, and if you got a gut like I do, you got a fatty liver. And it takes three to four years to create something that's completely regenerated. And that's okay because you have all the time in the world. You're adding years to your life when you stop sugar. You're adding years. And I could already feel it. I could feel it in my body. I could feel it in my I could feel my stomach. I could feel the visceral fat. The visceral fat is what's underneath the muscle as opposed to the other, the other fat that's over the muscle. So the visceral fat that's in my organs, surrounding my organs, making it hard uh, on my heart, blood, high blood pressure, all that, 
I feel it going away after 70 days. Now, I'm not going to get on a scale because that's not the goal. The goal was not to lose weight. That was a core, That was a result of something that I want. But asking the right question, the goal of losing weight will automatically solve itself. Would I like to lose a lot more within a month? Of course. Would I like this problem to be solved and not have a pot belly anymore? Yes. But you know what? Every day adds up. And I can't believe it's been 70 days. It's gone by like that. And I feel so good about the holidays coming up. I don't feel any pressure. I know I won't gain any weight. I'll lose weight. Because I took the sugar out of my body. And I'm looking forward now to, to Christmas now. I'm looking forward to pushing away the junk and eating healthy foods. You know, eating avocados, eating coconut uh, milk, eating kale smoothies and shakes. And I'll go a whole day and I'm, I'm not hungry anymore. Because my body is living off the, my, stored, my stored fat. It's, it's using it for fuel and it's, it's cleaner. The keto, when you're living off your fat, it's so much cleaner. The fat of food, foods, you know, it's not this real, this emotional roller coaster of eating sugar. It's breakfast time. Woo! Crash. Oh, I got to get me, pick me up. It's not doing that anymore. And why? Because I'm not, I'm not putting my liver and my body in, in sugar, um, in sugar hypnotism, you know, because that's what it was doing. So that's my thought of the day. Put your uh, questions and comments in the uh, description below. If you, haven't uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Um, I need to get to a thousand subscribers. And um, I'll have some more revealing thoughts as they go along. I appreciate it. Thank you.